Praise the Lord. You are so blessed. We are in a place right now uh, at the Book of Acts that every single local church, every single ministry, um, big or small, it gets to that place. It's a place of decisions. Is a place where you are looking for counsel because what you're going to decide is going to determine the path, not just for you, but for maybe hundreds, thousands, churches. In the case of this church, the, the, the first church, the primary church, it determined thousands of years. We can hear now the words of grace, even if there was lots of legalism and man control church and all this, but we can hear the words of grace because they made the right decision. So it's so important. So thinking about counsel, and we know it's one of the seven spirits, it's a spirit of counsel. It's so important to hear, listen and hear what counsel is saying. And there are some words here, it's not a study about spirit of counsel, but I want to introduce what the church did in this chapter, Acts 15. I want to introduce it through understanding counsel. Proverbs 11, 14, when there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. And yes, I'm, I'm not talking about people's opinions. I mean, who needs opinions, human opinions, uh, experiences? But if somebody's hearing or listening to the counsel of the Lord, I want to hear them. And I want to draw that counsel from these hearts of people who listen to the Lord. Proverbs 19.21 There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that will stand. The Lord's counsel will stand. Proverbs 20, verse 5. Counsel, listen to this, is in the heart of man like deep water. But a man of understanding will draw it out. So, there is counsel. Some people call it, well, intuitively, or the intuition kind of told me to wait, or do this, or not do that. But I didn't listen, or I did listen. They don't understand, but counsel is actually deep in the heart, in your heart. There is counsel. But unless there is understanding to draw it out, you cannot really know what that counsel is. The spirit of counsel is the deepest relationship one can have, a son, a new creation can have with the purposes of God. The counsel shows you the purpose of your father. His counsel comes alive from the will of the father. So the purpose and the will of the Father brings the counsel of God. Ephesians 1.11 In Him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose. Listen, the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will. His will is birthing, is giving life to this counsel.
the spirit of counsel receives life from the will of the Father that empowers counsel. And he works all things because that's when the will comes, the purpose is established and is established through counsel. So, very important point is that it is required understanding to draw out the counsel of God. And I, maybe this is the most important part that I want you to hear straight from the Lord, from the Holy Spirit, about asking questions and dealing with different decisions and the Lord is saying to you stop asking why this and why that because he called you to draw out of his counsel but you went to man even sons even people that you consider mature, but you went to them and they did not have the understanding so they could not go to the deep waters and draw out my counsel, says the Lord. You went and you tried knowing that there is the Lord's counsel and the deep water and you tried this person and that person and listened to that YouTube um, you looked at that prophetic uh, message and you are still trying to look on the surface from outside in and the Lord says no understanding and a man of an, a son with understanding is the only one that can draw out from the counsel of God. So this is a specific word for you that will bring exactly as you need the will of the Father, the purpose of God for your life coming right through the council and this is how the Lord is speaking is directed to you understanding love understanding have a relationship with understanding and then the why questions will go away <laughs> so The first church in Jerusalem, they had a big dilemma. Um, and again, they, they were looking at the present dilemma. And they didn't know how big of an influence they're going to have in their decision. And some of our decisions, especially if we are in a position of leadership, and we establish something. You start a, a ministry, maybe in in a group, in a in a city, in a country. And the Lord is using you to um, direct things, and you make decisions. Those are going through generations. It's so important. You know the trajectory as a missile is launched. If it is just a little bit off, it's going to end up miles off because of that. Miles. Right? By the time it reaches the destination, it's going to reach somewhere else. It's so important to be so accurate, absolute accurate, in how the decision is made. So, you know what happened? They went there and... Uh, Paul, Barnabas, they went and told everyone about the issue they have um, with the Pharisees, the ones that want to bring the Gentiles under the law. And uh, Peter is the one that spoke. 
and he he had the experience of Cornelius, remember? It says in Acts 15, 11, we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved in the same manner as they. <laughs> Such a pure, clear word that Peter is. And then James, which seemed to be the um, maybe the elder, chief, the chief elder, <laughs> he said, uh, closing the matter, Therefore, I judge that we should not trouble those from among the Gentiles who are turning to God. <laughs> I love that. Let's, let's not trouble them. Such a one mind, such a one accord. These guys were Jews from birth. They only knew the law. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, made such a difference in them that they can speak such a clear direction from the counsel of the Lord. Clear. So in the letter they wrote to the first church of the Gentiles, the Antioch church, they said, um, Acts 15, 28, I really love that. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. See, this is, this is one mind, one accord. This is a decision that the body of Christ in unity is making, starting from the Holy Spirit, is the mind of the Spirit. And that's what counsel is doing. So important to come together, trusting the Lord in each of the people around you. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you abstain from things offered to idols, from blood, things strangled, from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from this, you will do well. Farewell. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> no preaching, no super elaborate message. Hey, these are things that pollute you spiritually, soulishly, body-wise. Stay away from that. This is, this is good. It's not the law. It's something we urge you because it's important. We know we have the experience. If you do that, you'll be well. God bless you. <laughs> Don't you love the simplicity of the word, of the truth? So, um, it's so beautiful how this one mind, one accord came in in this. But... <laughs> Soon after that, they go back to Antioch. Paul and Barnabas go back. But they themselves have a dissension, a discussion. Something came between the two apostles. And that was the two leaders between Paul and Barnabas and was regarding John Mark. Seems that Barnabas was related to Mark, and I don't know if that was something to do with the, his preference. Um, but um, they, it was such a big deal that they actually went separate ways. Paul took Silas, and Barnabas took Mark, and they went. They parted the ways. That was such a big, such a big deal. Now, there is just a little observation I just want to leave with you. That discussion and that moment is the last time we hear about Barnabas in the Book of Acts. We hear a lot about Paul, a lot about Silas. We do hear about John Mark when Paul is actually receiving him back. But 
not about Barnabas. Very interesting. There are, again, decisions that one leader makes. <laughs> now, it, I'm, I'm not in a place to convince people. Sometimes I like to tell them and show them and work on their heart to see this is the right direction, this is the right way. But um, I don't think we are in that ministry of convincing the other leaders, the other churches, the other people. Of, yeah, we, we got it right. Come on with us. We got it right. Um, no. And I, I know this hurt. Because Paul was very close to Barnabas. He was the one that came after him. He somehow made him famous. <laughs> brought him into the ministry. And they were together. And Barnabas sounded like a, an amazing person to be around. But they got to the place. And Paul had to let it go. Who was right? I uh, will know one time. But it's not even important who was right. I just want to tell you, check your heart in decisions, in loyalty that you have for this or for that. Check your heart. Maybe your commitment is not what it should be for different reasons. Your heart keeps telling you, the Holy Spirit from the heart keeps telling you, your commitment should be here. And it's not. Or it tells you, hey, just let go of that. Let go of that. Yes, but, you know, I owe them because of this and because of that. And the Lord says, I, I can do much more than that. Check your heart and place your loyalty, your commitment, where the Holy Spirit wants you to do it. This is for you.